Many Genshin Impact players and content creators talk about pull value for a 5 star as a way to talk about how worth it they are for you to wish for on your account. High value characters are must pulls and low value characters are not worth it. Well, I'm here to tell you that this way of ranking units is absolutely useless for the vast, vast, vast majority of players. And I'll tell you how I actually think that you should judge whether a unit is right for you or not. Welcome to Jello Impact where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Let's talk about why value is a lie. First of all, to talk about why value is such a bad way to judge whether or not a unit is worth it, let's first define what value is. After watching an absolute metric ton of Genshin Impact content over the years, I have determined that value is approximately this formula. Power times flexibility times uniqueness. So the first one, power. Most people agree that Al Hytham is a very powerful character, either an S or maybe an A tier character. But also most people agree that he's not a very valuable character to the account because of his lack of the second component, flexibility, and the third component, uniqueness. He's got pretty good power in terms of the damage output he gives to his teams. He's a little bit flexible because he works in both spread and aggravate teams, but he doesn't have very high uniqueness as you can run other Hyper Bloom variants that perform just as well, if not better. And even if you don't agree with the fact that other options can be better, it's not so far above the other ones, no matter how you stretch it, that it's the only way viable way to play Hyper Bloom or something like that. So his uniqueness is low and his flexibility is kind of low because it's a really only two teams and you can easily run aggravate teams instead of his spread teams or hyper, other hyper bloom teams instead of his hyper bloom teams. So most people for that reason, even though he's strong, don't consider him very valuable. But what about someone like Nilu? She's extremely unique and extremely powerful. But a lot of people talk about her being shoehorned into specific Dendro teams because of her lacks of lack of flexibility, they would consider her not a very valuable unit. It's only when we get to characters like Nahida, who uniquely applies so much Dendro that really no other Dendro character can touch her, especially from off field and with buffing and doing good damage. So she has a high level of power and a high level of flexibility. She works on basically every team. So people would say, yes, Nahida is a valuable character. Zhang Li, he is flexible and he's unique, but people argue that his power level is relatively low, so he's not that valuable. Or people who think that he's OP think that he's extremely valuable because he ends up with all three of those, but most people would agree he's pretty unique and he's very flexible. So depending on where you rank his power is whether will tell you whether or not people think he's a valuable pull or not. So anyways, I think I've cracked the code as to what people define as valuable. You could also argue that valuable is characters that help you get to a 36 star clear in the abyss as efficiently as possible. Or you could argue value as working effectively on as many teams as possible, depending on if your goal is to build as many teams as possible or to clear the spiral abyss as efficiently as possible. So you could also argue that those are forms of value as well. But I think in all cases, value pretty much falls apart completely. And this is why. As a free to play player, you can guarantee yourself constellations of Bennett, constellations of Singcho, constellations of Zhang Ling, Dendro Traveler, den other Dendro units like Yao Yao. You can't guarantee yourself a Sucrose, but you can come pretty close to getting it. You only need C1 Sucrose to have her full value. And you can also guarantee units like Fischl and Beto. And it's really not very hard to get yourself a Kuki either. So when we're looking at this roster of free to play accessible units, I can already see two things. I can already see a national team come to Together. I can already see an aggravate team come together. I can see a hyper bloom come together and I can see the core of a mono pyro or international or something, some other team with Bennett Zhangling as the core come together on the other side of a hyper bloom team. So if we're judging value in terms of characters that help you get to 36 stars, you really don't need any five stars. So value is useless if you consider value in that way. And it also means that virtually every single five star is either going to be a very minor upgrade or completely redundant. So I'm just gonna leave all these characters 
up here for now just so we can look at them and so for a free to play in terms of value i mean you can go for nilu but but she's not flexible so she's not an s tier for most according to most people even kazua pretty valuable but he's not unique you can already use sucrose you don't need kazua Zhongli, not powerful enough to be considered s tier some may put him in b some may put him in s still we'll kind of meet in the middle al hytham really no reason to get al hytham nahida you can get her, but you don't absolutely need to. You still get Dendro Traveler and Yao Yao for free. And Yalan, although she is very, very powerful and flexible, you already have Sing Cho. And unless you really, really just want to run both Hyper Bloom on one side and National on the other side, which is going to be a, a gr some great teams, she's really not unique enough to be considered an S tier valuable unit. And when we start looking at other five stars, pretty much no five stars are necessary are you are unique enough, powerful enough, necessary enough to outpace the absolutely incredible five stars we have? Shen He's too niche. You can already build a great national team without Raiden. Why build Mono Geo when you can just build national? Why why wish for Baiju if you already have Yao Yao? Why go for Yaimiko if you can already get you can already get Kaching from the standard banner? Since the only thing I could see is since both Hyper Bloom and National really want a, a Hydro unit, you could argue that getting one of a really solid Hydro option could be an S tier pull in terms of power, flexibility, and uniqueness. But otherwise, what's the point in wishing on every character when there may be minor upgrades, even side grades, even downgrades to lots of four star options? And most of the cast just aren't valuable at all. So let's talk about how to fix this. First of all, you want to determine what your goals for this game are. Are you trying to clear the abyss? Are you trying to full star the abyss? Are you trying to full star with anybody or with just your favorites? Are you just trying to get the, to beat the weekly bosses and not touch the abyss at all? Are you just trying to have as many teams as you possibly can so you can enjoy different types of combat? All of these are totally valid ways of playing. This is a game. You're supposed to have fun. There's no right or wrong way for you to have fun. But if I were to give a recommendation, the first thing I would do is determine who are your favorite five star characters. For me, when I started this game and I saw Raiden's trailer, I knew I was going to wish for her. There was no question about it. She was my favorite and I was going to get her best team because I wanted to clear and full star the abyss with her every single rotation. That was how I was going to have the most fun. The other characters that were non-negotiable to me were Yoimiya, Nilu, Ayaka, and Shenha, closely trailed by Ayaka. You might be able to have predicted this based on my background. So if I was starting over this game and I was a brand new person, the advice I would give to myself is, okay, say, okay, these are my favorite characters. Now, the other question is, what are your goals? Well, my goals, because I love the combat system, was to 36 star the Abyss using teams that centered around my favorite character Shining. So if I were giving myself advice, I would say, let's try and arrange these top favorite characters into two teams or as many teams as they require. So Raiden doesn't really synergize with any of these characters. So if I'm going to build a team with her, she's going to be all alone. Same thing with Yoimiya, same thing with Nilu, and Ayaka goes really well with Shenha. Now, the next thing I would do is to determine the characters you really don't want. This definitely doesn't apply to everybody, but some people just have characters that they don't like using for whatever reason. I know some people really don't like Sing Cho. Some people don't really like Bennett. This is going to restrict your team building a lot, but if you don't want to build them, it's important to, to identify that and say I reject meta I don't want to build national team and it's like okay that's fine we've identified that that's your goal you want a 36 star the abyss but not use certain characters so now we've determined our favorite characters now let's determine step number four which team you want to go for for your favorite characters and what four stars are already part of that team or what characters you already have that can support those characters so that you don't need to wish for any additional characters for that team. For example, if you're okay with using Raiden National, you may say, All I just want to use Raiden National, so I already have my Raiden team picked out, I'm good to go. You don't need to wish for any more five stars for this team. That team is done. We can focus on your second team. For me, when I first started playing, I really didn't want to use Sing Cho or Zhang Ling. I was fine with Bennett, but I just didn't like the designs of Sing Cho and Zhang Ling, I figured there's so many characters, these designs are not my favorite, I'd rather not use them if I don't have to. And so it was actually a really long time until I did build those characters. Now I use them all the time, and I don't have a problem with it, but in the beginning I was very attached to who I was actually using 
for my teams. And so we can choose one of two teams for Raiden. We can say, okay, either we're gonna do a hyper carry team with Bennett, or we're gonna do a dendro based team with either Kirara, Yao Yao, and where Raiden is driving Fischl using the Aggravate reaction. If we're going with the Aggravate team, then you can use Sucrose as the last slot. And this is and this is another team that we don't need any additional five stars to go for. If you're going for more of a hyper carry team, then you really do want Kazuha, Ben Bennett, and the Electro slot could be Fischl, could be Lisa, or Kujo Sara in particular if you have C6. And so let's say you wanna go for this team, it's like, okay, now I'm gonna set my sights on Raiden, and Kazuha, very manageable. And so let's go on to the second team. Let's say our second team, we choose Nilu. Well, Nilu really, really wants Nahida, but the other two slots could be Barbara, Candice, Kirara, Yao Yao for the four star options. And there's even a few others, Kale, even Kave. And then for five stars, Kokomi is gonna be the best. Baiju is a little bit redundant, and also Singcho is pretty good. So for Nilu, you can go for Kokomi, but really you just wanna prioritize Nahida. And so if you've decided, okay, these are my two teams that I'm gonna go for, maybe you haven't even decided which exact four stars you're gonna go for, but you're like, okay, based on this, my personal wishing tier list is riding an SS tier, because you really want them. Nilu in SS tier, Nahida in SS tier, Kazuha in SS tier, and Kokomi maybe in A tier, something like that. That's your personal wishing tier list, and so you can plan around getting these characters. And you can put every other character that doesn't work with them in the B or even an F tier, because why would you get them if they don't synergize with your favorite characters or they're not your favorite character? And let's say we also wanted to consider Ayaka or Shenha as well. Well, Ayaka and Shenha also want Kokomi, but you can get away with Candice or Barbara or Sing Cho. Ideally, if you're not going to be going with Kokomi, you hopefully have Mona. I personally don't, so I'm using Sing Cho or Candice or Barbara, but she also really, really wants Kazuha. And since for me, I really wanted Shenha, but if you don't really care for Shenha, then you can definitely get away with Rosaria or Kaya here. And so Kazuha becomes the only one. And so if we're going back to making our personal tier list, well, you know, obviously we already have Raiden and Nilu in the SS tier, but if we're considering getting Ayaka as well, then we're gonna put Kazuha in the SS tier because we really need him to support multiple teams. And so hopefully you're starting to get the mindset for this game. You're not gonna be getting every character. And if you just focus on getting all your favorite characters, like if I just focus on getting Raiden, Nilu, Ayaka and Yoimiya, I would just end up with four semi-scuffed teams. Well, obviously Raiden can work with just with just aggravate stuff, but Ayaka, Nilu, Yoimiya, they need certain five stars to really make their potential shine. And Raiden, you know, for a lot of her teams, she does as well. And you can also see how your tier list completely changes depending on which character you're trying to go for. So for Yoimiya, her best team is Double Hydro. So she really, really wants Yelan and Zhongli. You can also use Yunjin instead of Sing Cho here. And so if you're trying to figure out by watching a video, you know, is Zhongli worth the pull? The question is not whether or not he's strong. The question or not is, whether or not he's valuable. That has nothing to do with it. All that has to do with it is, are you playing a character that really wants Zhongli on their best team? Because if you're running Ayaka on one side and Raiden on the other, no, you should not get Zhongli. But if you're trying to make your Yoimiya or your Hu Tao work comfortably or your Ito, and you're trying to make the best and most comfy teams for them, then you absolutely want Zhongli. If you've been liking the content, if you agree with my philosophy, I think we need to change the way that we're thinking about wishing for characters. And if you've been liking this, enjoying this, and you wanna see more videos, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps me out a lot. I came up with a lot of these theories from building my own account, and I made some crucial mistakes building my own account. And that's where I sort of came up with this idea of this type of wishing. So if you wanna see that video on the mistakes that I made, check it out right there and bye for now.